As photographers, we often talk about the differences between 8-bit, 16-bit, and 32-bit color. But what does this really mean, and what are the practical differences between these three types of color? Let's dive into it. To start, I'm going to assume you have a basic understanding of photography concepts. If not, check out some of my other videos. And I'm going to assume that you have access to a computer with editing software, which will help put the theory into context for you. In digital photography, there are three primary categories when it comes to image quality, 8-bit, 16-bit, and 32-bit. Each has its own advantages and disadvantages, which can help you decide which type of image quality is best for your project. So let's start by looking at 8-bit images. With 8-bit, each pixel of an image is represented by a single byte, which is 8 bits, of data which allows for 256 levels of shades of each primary color, red, green, and blue, resulting in a total of 16 million colors within a single image. Still following, right? This makes 8-bit images ideal for web graphics as they are small enough in size but still retain adequate detail for most applications. However, one downside is that because there are only 256 levels per color channel, there can be noticeable banding in gradients or the smooth transitions from one color to another due to a lack of immediate tones. Then we have 16-bit images which, as you can imagine, offer double the amount of color information per pixel compared to their 8-bit counterparts. This allows for 65,000 levels per primary color, resulting 281 trillion colors within an image, more than enough for professional use. Don't worry, I'm going to stop talking about numbers now. But with this increased level of detail comes larger file sizes, but also much smoother transitions between colors without any visible banding, making them ideal for print projects such as magazines or posters where subtlety is key. Finally, we have 32-bit images, which provide four times as much data per pixel compared with their 8-bit counterparts. And as you can imagine, this provides a huge level of detail, but also much larger file file sizes, which may not always be practical depending on your project requirements. And while 32-bit images do provide excellent results when printed, they aren't currently supported by most web browsers, so really just aren't suitable for web-based projects or devices such as websites, online galleries, iPhones, social media, etc. So let's take a look at some examples so you can see how they compare side by side. Here's an example showing both an 8-bit and 16-bit version. And in this video, if you can't tell the differences clearly on your screen, then try it for yourself. Take one image, and I'm going to use Lightroom for this, but most editing softwares will have the same function and similar way of going about it, and export it two different ways. One important note here, all JPEG files are 8-bit only, as they are specialized compression files. So you'll need to choose PNG, PSD, or TIFF file types, but let's use PNG is its quickest and easiest to deal with. So export one copy at 8-bit and one at 16-bit, open them fully on your computer screen and study the differences. It's one thing listening to me, it's another learning to see the differences for yourself. So go ahead and try it. Let me know how you get on. Now you know the main differences between 8-bit, 16-bit and 32-bit colors, go ahead and experiment with different settings on your next project or with your next photos to find out which works best. And to recap, remember 8-bit images, they're small all of file sizes with good enough detail for most web projects and devices and will always come with JPEG images. 16-bit images on the other hand have higher level of detail with smoother transitions between colors making them really nice to look at and perfect for print projects or more bigger professional uses. 32-bit images uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it to be honest and if you need this then you probably don't need to be watching my video now. Speaking of watching my video thank you so much let me know what you think. Give me a comment, which do you use and why? And if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe and like it. I really appreciate your support. Until next time, stay curious, happy shooting. Cheers.